Send this report to the Ministry of Civil Affairs and have them delegate each of the tasks on the list to the appropriate departments. Also, be sure to tell them that though the lantern rite may be complicated, everything must be done properly. Hello, Lady Mingguang. It's us again. No, of course not. You are my honored guests. And given the looks of you two, I presume that you're here to celebrate the lantern rite? That's right! So what's on the agenda for the festival this year? As always, there will be a variety of activities taking place. Oh, but there is one of particular interest. The Ministry of Civil Affairs is planning a fireworks show this year. It should certainly be worth your time. Releasing Ming Xiao lanterns has always been at the heart of the lantern rite. But with all that has occurred in Liyue as of late, I think the people of the city need something to warm their hearts. A feeling of everyone coming together in solidarity. So, I believe that this year calls for a celebration of particular magnificence. Something that would be closer to the hearts of every citizen. We are currently in the process of placing fireworks at various locations all throughout Liyue. We shall choose a timely moment during the festival to set off all the fireworks in unison, allowing the sparkling lights and excitement to resonate with the hearts of the people. Fireworks? But we've already seen fireworks in other places before. <gasps> Is there something special about the fireworks in Liyue? Fireworks were originally developed alongside many other inventions here in Liyue. When our ancestors first created fireworks, they were originally known as firecrackers. Their bright flashes and loud sounds were often used for warding off beasts or as warning signals to other people. In those days, it was difficult for people to contact one another while out farming the land, so they would carry firecrackers with them to give signals when necessary. But people's lifestyles began to change after Leo Harbor was founded. They no longer had to travel out of town to tin the fields anymore, so the use of firecrackers for emergencies also began to dwindle. But through our local customs, the pioneering spirit of the firecrackers has been passed down to this very day. We made improvements to firecrackers and began setting them off during the lantern rite to commemorate the tenacious spirit of our ancestors. Everything has so much history in Liyue! As I'm sure you already know, everything on this land accumulates history and value as time passes. That is the nature of Liyue. I've left Kuching in charge of the fireworks show. If you're interested, why don't we pay her a visit together? to add a few more locations for launching fireworks. The show has to be visible all across Liyue, not just in the city. They celebrate Lantern right in Qingsa Village too, you know. <laughs> but, Lady Kuching, what about our budget? The budget is exactly what it's meant to be. It's the necessary amount of funds to properly carry out a task. If you think the current budget will not suffice, then we'll simply have to apply for more funding from the Ministry of Civil Affairs and wait for their approval. Our aim is to organize a memorable lantern rite. The budget is there just to facilitate planning. We mustn't lose sight of our goal. Yes, Lady Kuching. I understand. Good. And please remember, safety first. <sighs> hmm? Oh, it's Ningguang and the Traveler. Good to see you. Are you here for the lantern rite? Your timing couldn't be any better. The preparations are almost complete. I'm reviewing the positioning of the fireworks and double-checking the relevant facilities. It's all in a day's work. Forgive my directness, but if I'm not mistaken, you could just as easily leave these tasks to your subordinates. 
You've already been working around the clock these past few days. I am sure a break would not be amiss. Uh, no, no, it's fine. Really, I can handle it. Pungi, please redraft our plans, make a summary report, and send it to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I'm going into town to check the progress of the fireworks setup. I'll return shortly. As for you, Traveler, you're our esteemed guest. Please, take the opportunity to stay in Liyue Harbor and enjoy the festivities. Pungi, is everything clear? Please remember the tasks I've given you. Yes, Lady Kuching. Don't worry. Good. Ningguang, Traveler, goodbye for now. Please, excuse me, Lady Ningguang. And, uh, Traveler. I must get going. Lady Kuching told me a great deal of information, and I have to write up the plans from scratch again. So time is of the essence. Oh, one moment. I almost forgot. Here, Traveler. This is a launch tube. Lady Kuching said you may be interested, so she had me keep one to give to you. Someone with good handicraft skills should be able to use this to design their very own fireworks. You should try it when you have the chance. Couldn't get a single word in just now. Uh, well, more like Paimon didn't dare open her mouth while they were talking, but still. Did you notice it too? Lady Kuching is a lot more outspoken than she used to be, and she seems a whole lot busier too. Wonder why? Ever since the Adepti left Liyue Harbor in the hands of mortals, we Qixing have taken up the responsibility of leading the people. We have taken charge of many vital tasks in various sectors, and we are responsible for planning and organizing all sorts of affairs. That said, being in charge of everything inevitably takes its toll. It's exhausting at times. Jiang Zhou was responsible for planning the Lantern Rite in former years, but her father is getting quite old now, so she transferred to another department this year. In the end, the Lantern Rite planning was left to Kuching and myself. I am the head organizer, while Kuching is responsible for the highly anticipated fireworks show. Such an important event should be entrusted to the most qualified candidate. Kuching is disciplined, yet passionate about her work, so she's naturally the best fit for the job. She's definitely disciplined! No doubt about that! Absolutely. She is strict with both herself and others, to the point that she can even become overly involved at times. She's worked several days without a break now. I'm concerned about the effects it may have in the long run. Finding balance is an essential concept in Liyue culture. I've tried talking to her, but you know how she is. She uses her wit to talk circles around anyone. Traveler, you are quite close to Kuching. Why don't you try talking to her? Maybe she'd listen to someone as experienced as you. Thank you, Traveler. I am glad you are able to help. Kuching can be a tough nut to crack sometimes. I still have other business to attend to at the Jade Chamber. I'll leave Kuching in your capable hands. Uh, are you sure you can really persuade Kuching to take a break? Even Ningguang herself couldn't manage to convince her. Besides, before you can persuade someone, you have to at least understand how they feel at the moment. Kuching has been working non-stop without a break. Uh, duh! Come on, everyone knows that. Think harder. How does she feel deep, deep down inside? Uh, or maybe... <gasps> we can ask a friend! You know, someone more knowledgeable about these things. Huh? Zhang Li? Oh, there's no arguing that. Zhang Li it is then. Hmm, Paimon thinks he's still a consultant at the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Let's go see if he's there.
Hello. How may I help you? Ah, yes. Well, I'm afraid he is currently out with the director. Out with the director? Oh, you mean for work? The director said that they were going for a walk. If you'd prefer, you could go look for them at Third Round Knockout. I've heard the director often goes there to do, uh, promotion. Yum, yum, yum. Ooh, I am so full. Not another bite. Hats off to you, Xiangling. Serving the grilled fish with a dipping sauce is quite an innovative approach. The flavor is just to die for. <laughs> That's my signature dipping sauce. I knew it would taste great. Hmm. Tempered Jueyun chili powder mixed with garlic paste and chopped scallions then seasoned with salt, vinegar, and soy sauce, before finally sizzling in hot oil. This recipe may seem a bit crude, but is entirely hinged on the precise balancing of flavors and seasonings by the chef. Everything must be balanced just right. It is the consummate mastery of this balance that turns a humble dish into an exquisite one. Oh, that's quite the compliment, don't you think? <laughs> I'm flattered. Thank you, Mr. Zhongli. And I thought I have a way with words. But you certainly take the prize, Mr. Zhongli. You are too kind, Director. Your eloquence is... <clears throat> infamous in Liu Harbor. Oh, what's that? Oh, would you like to order something, Guoba? Oh, please, by all means, it's my treat. I'll just open a tab under Xiangling. <laughs> Hey, are you guys talking about tasty food again? Oh, it's the Traveler in Paimon. What brings you to this side of town? Hold on, let me take a wild guess. Hmm, yes. Oh, you must be here for the lantern, right? Uh, isn't that pretty obvious? <laughs> Anybody could have guessed that. Oh, yeah, come on. Can't you take a joke? You came at the perfect time. I was just letting everyone try my latest dish. The owner of Third Round Knockout says it's, it, well, a real knockout. Mr. Zhongli and Hu Tao seem to like it too, but I think it never hurts to let more people do a taste test. How about it, you two? Would you like to have a taste? Huh. Don't have to ask Paimon twice, or once even. Huh? You mean we're not gonna try any? Oh, fine. Let's get down to business. We meet again, Traveler. I trust your journey is going well? Splendid. Therein lies the value of a journey. So come on. Why are you looking for our good consultants? Do enlighten us. And just in case you were wondering, we're on business too. We only tried Xiangling's dish since we just happened to be here. Business? What kind of business would the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor possibly have during a festival? Even during the most joyous of holidays, life still follows its natural course, does it not? Is that really so surprising? <laughs> But there isn't a need to be alarmed. It's just a nice day today, and I thought we could go for a walk while doing a little promotion for our business. Oh, you could go ahead and chat away. Xiangling and I will go have some tea with the boss over there. Oh, Xiangli, please come get me when you're through here. Of course. I'll see you later, Director. Now then, Traveler, what brings you to see me today? Hmm, yes. The Yuhang is honest, intelligent, and most diligent. She is capable of shouldering responsibilities that few others could. But everything has a balance, and one's health must certainly weigh in. Yeah, everyone knows you're super knowledgeable. Paimon bet she would listen to someone like you. If I were still the mighty Rex Lapis, I might be able to help her see reason. But alas, 
I'm now nobody but an ordinary consultant. My words no longer carry the same weight as they once did. Besides, I am by no means close to the Yuhang. Taking the liberty to lecture her may just as easily produce the opposite of the desired effect. Oh, you're right. Uh, then what should we do? We could take a more subtle, indirect approach to the matter, such as telling a story that resonates with her, containing your message conveyed within it. Such a story can be achieved by referencing topics from her daily life. The story could prove even more effective if you weave in something about someone close to her. Um... Hyman doesn't really get it. I knew you'd understand what to do. <laughs> well done, Traveler. Go collect some source materials for your story. Of course, I can always provide you with my advice, if needed. Once we have formulated the plot, you can tell the story to the Yuhang. You are on amiable terms with the Yuhang, which makes you the natural candidate. Oh, Paimon gets it! So we need to talk with people who know Kuching, right? Hmm. So who should we start with? Greetings, everyone. Uh, I hope I'm not intruding. Huh? Oh! Lady Kuching! <laughs> Mr. Zhongli, I didn't expect to see you here. Thank you for all your assistance during the Rite of Parting. You are most welcome, Yu Hung. It was the least I could do. Hmm? Why? And what's with your strange expression? Oh, I see. My apologies. I appear to have interrupted your conversation with Mr. Zhongli. Kuching, are you here looking for us? Yes. I was going to ask you to introduce me to the Adepti. I thought that it would be fitting to send them some festive gifts on behalf of the Liyue Qixing. But didn't you meet them when we were fighting to defend Liyue Harbor together? You could just as easily go and find them in Juyun Karst. Yes, but we only met briefly on that single occasion. The Adepti may have already forgotten about me. And I'm concerned it would be imprudent to show up so suddenly. Which is why I thought it would be more appropriate to ask you to introduce me first. So you even have to run around delivering gifts in person? <sighs> it sure doesn't seem easy to be a cheesing. <sighs> Thank you, Traveler. Let me go and prepare the gifts. I'm sorry to make you run errands with me during our big festival. I promise to make this quick, and I'll be sure to get you back in time to enjoy the fireworks show. Huh? T-together? <clears throat> All right. I'll go to see the fireworks with you once I've finished my work. Uh, speaking of which, Mr. Zhongli, the fireworks show will be particularly exciting this year. Please, don't miss it. Ah, yes. Thank you for your kind reminder. <sighs> I should be going now. Traveler, please come find me at the Jade Chamber once you're ready. And there she goes! <laughs> That's the Yu Hung. Efficient and reliable as ever. You're really reliable too, Zhang Li! <laughs> Why, thank you, Paimon. Please, don't forget our earlier conversation. Once you've collected enough story material, we can meet here again and discuss things further.
great many things are still unaccounted for. The new Jade Chamber is missing many of the contents held by its predecessor. All the literature, furniture, and ornaments I had collected followed the original Jade Chamber to its watery grave. Most of it was destroyed in the process, and the small handful of items that survived intact are strewn across the water's surface. Reclaiming them is taxing work. It takes someone with sturdy sea legs to handle this job. But even then, I just can't tell whether Beto will be able to fish out everything herself. Wait! So you made Beto go and fish your stuff out of the sea for you? To claim that I made her do anything would be imprecise. We reached a mutually beneficial agreement, as is always the case in our dealings. Payment is one aspect of it, but I also compensate her in other ways. <laughs> Let's just say it's a little complicated. Anyway, Beto is currently in the Guyen Stone Forest area. If you're interested, go pay her a visit. You may be just the help she needs. Long. You're really trying my patience. I'm sorry, but if the Jade Chamber smashed into smithereens when it hit the sea, then so did everything inside it. Just because I know the ocean doesn't mean I have the power to fish up the past. Oh, Traveler, what are you doing out this way? Great, you couldn't have picked a better time. The whole fleet's caught up with other things right now, so I'll take all the help I can get. Look, I even had to rope Xinyan into this. Yeah, what's the occasion? Did you come all the way out here to do a performance? You bet I did. <laughs> Nothing official, mind you. Beta wanted to hold a feast on board, and I agreed to come play a couple of tunes. But all that went out the window when someone showed up saying they were one of Ning Long's secretaries. They called Beta away. Uh, I think it was Bai Wen or Bai Xiao. Uh, well, it was by something. Anyway, Ningguang apparently came up with the bright idea of me going out on the sea and salvaging a bunch of her old valuables. She seems pretty willing to shell out for it, too. <sighs> well, at the end of the day, the price was right. So, yeah, we took the work. Now, if we're gonna go trawling for trinkets, we're gonna need a smaller vessel. All the available boats have been dispatched already, but by the looks of it, we're still one short. Say so you have your own vessel, do ya? <laughs> Great, let's take yours then. The more people we have on this job, the better. Because the sooner we get this wrapped up, the sooner we can get that feast going and actually enjoy the festival. I could get used to this. So, this is it? This is your boat? It's really, uh, compact. But it works. It's about the right size for sweeping up junk from the water surface. The only thing is, we're packed in like sardines here. There's nowhere to put my guitar. Uh, Xinyan, your axe is getting a little too close for comp- Hold up, are those treasure hoarders? Hmm, we don't usually see these guys out at sea. Could they be here for the same reason as us? Come on, Traveler, steer us a little closer. Huh? Why are they headed back to shore? To reconvene with their posse, I'll bet. Speed it up a notch, Traveler. This is a chase now. Thank you. 
gaining on us. We can't give them the slip. Call in Carbon. <laughs> Carbon? What kind of treasure hoarder has a name like that? One that I happen to know pretty well. Didn't think we'd be running into him. Incoming! With sword comes shadow. Born of ice and fall. Go! Access denied. Bring it on! Gotta run! Stop! All of you! Are you blind? Can't you see this is Captain Beto? <laughs> Captain Beto! It's been a while. Still fighting fit, I see. I guess it has been a while, Carmen. You're looking a little worse for wear. Maybe if you did your own dirty work rather than dispatching your minions, you wouldn't be so out of breath right now. <laughs> How you jest, Beto. Very amusing. <laughs> to get serious for a second, though, I'm gonna be needing all of this. Of course, of course. Whatever Captain Beto wants. You heard her, people. Drop the goods. Here you are. It's all here. Wow. He did what we asked without a second thought. <laughs> Couldn't run off quickly enough, either. Ugh, don't waste any more time on them. We've still got salvaging to do. Ah, but we should load this stash onto the boat first. Come on, Traveler, help me out here. Let's bring them in and take a look. I'll take the rudder. Traveler, Xinyan, go reel them in. Hey! Looks like another treasure hoarder raft straight up ahead. But why is it empty? I guess Carmen told all his people to call it off. Smart choice. He knows who he's up against. <laughs> Let's keep going. No time to lose. Come on. We gotta wrap this up soon. Leave the junk, take anything and everything of value. And I need a few of you to load the boat up. Move it! Whatever you're about to do, don't. And B Beto? Wh what are you doing here? I might ask you the same question. I mean, uh, what does it look like? We got lucky. Found some treasure floating around in the ocean. If you see anything you like, it's yours for the taking. A token of our esteem for the mighty Captain Beto. <laughs> Is that right? I, but, uh, me and the guys have been busting a gut gathering all this up. Y Let me make this crystal clear. These things do not belong to you, and they never will. Uh, that's a little, uh, hey, hey, hey. Uh, why don't we start over here, huh? You see, we... Huh. Sounds a lot like you're stalling to me. Talk is cheap. Let's settle this the old-fashioned way. No Head to the chase! <laughs> <Petite. laughs> Boats loaded in, in the water, boss. Come take a look. 
Captain Bader's worth no punches. Retreat! Retreat! Uh, if the boss is bailing, we'd better bail too! Whoa! Looks like they're out of here! We're, we're sorry we offended you, Captain Bader. Give us some time. We'll find a way to make it right. I promise. Boy, they sure ran off quickly. Ah, uh, who cares? They didn't take anything with them. The bigger problem here is there's no way all of this is going to fit onto your boat. <sighs> okay, here's what we're gonna do. Unload the boat and put everything here in one place. Based on the original plan, Sea Drake's boat should be coming past here at some point. When they get here, we'll hitch a ride with them. In the meantime, Traveler, head back to the Jade Chamber and deliver a message to Ningguang for me. Just tell her we're almost done fishing for trinkets here, so... She should start getting my compensation ready. All right. Thanks, Traveler. If both Carmen and Leo Leo were here, then I wonder if that other boss of theirs, Big Sis, is snooping around. <sighs> I've gotta tell Sea Drake and the rest of the crew to stay on high alert. Welcome back. I trust Beta was making good progress on salvaging the items. Treasure hoarders. I see. Yes, I can imagine that must have been rather irksome. It sounds like you scared them off on this occasion. But it won't end there. They are not the type to forgive and forget. You needn't concern yourself with them any further, though. Leave them to Beto. She is well versed in handling treasure hoarders. I will be sure to make preparations for her compensation. I also owe you my thanks for coming all this way to deliver Beto's message. Here, please take this as a token of my appreciation. Now, please excuse me. I have other business that demands my attention. I wish you a fun-filled festival. 